So, who is your neighbor? I mean it literally, who is your neighbor? Do you know your neighbors? Do you know your neighbors where you live? Do you know your neighbors at work, those who work around you? How about them in school? Do you know those who are in your classroom? Can they your student neighbors? Do you know your neighbors here at church? You know, we Catholics, we're very habitual. We always sit down in the same places. I want you to look around. Do you know as the names of everyone around you? Go ahead and do it. <laughs> okay, I see some of you already saying, hi, oh, very good. You're ahead. You're in the advanced class here. Who is truly our neighbor? I mean, it used to be when somebody moved into a new neighborhood, and the neighbors will come by, they bring in my apple pie or cookies or, you know, some fruits, they introduce themselves, they invite them over. I don't know, I don't think that happens too often these days. Am I wrong or just me? People can avoid me. <laughs> Who is my neighbor? Well, the Gospel tells us that the scholar of the law wanted kind of to just test Jesus. Well, how is this a test? First, he asked the question. Jesus does not give him the answer. Jesus says, well, what do you think? He gives the right answer. And then he asks another question. Who is my neighbor? Well, the reason that was kind of a tricky question or a kind of test question for Jesus because as you know in the Gospel, Jesus so far has been going to tax collectors' homes. He's been eating at their tables. He's been touching the lepers. He's been healing the sick. He even healed the centurion servant, a Roman, not a Jew. There was a woman behind this question that they asked Jesus, who is your neighbor? Because in the understanding of the scholar of the law and the Jewish people at that time, their neighbors were only other Jews who were good. You know, the Pharisees were not even touch anyone who was like sick or whom they considered not to be their neighbor. Because they then would become unclean. But here comes Jesus and he's like touching everyone and eating with everyone. What's wrong with this person? You tell us, yeah, who is your neighbor? Where are you going to draw the line? Where are you going to stop? But Jesus takes the question and turns it around. Not really who is my neighbor, but are you a neighbor? So he gives up this story about this man who was you know, robbed by you know, people on the way to, from Jerusalem to Jericho, and the priest comes by and he avoids the man. Not a good thing for a priest to talk about it, why? But why? Well, the priest did what the law said. Because if that man was dead and the priest touched him, then the priest cannot celebrate his ministry. He becomes unclean. So that's one reason is he's following the law. He doesn't want to jeopardize his ministry. The other reason is a lot of times robbers use this boy to get people to stop because then they attack him and rob them. So he was afraid for his life. Is this really person safe or is pretending to be a saint? Is he a robber? The same thing with the Levite. The Levite is someone who served in the temple, was not a priest, kind of like the lay ministers today. He would have become impure if he touched that person. Or again, he was afraid they might jump him and rob him. And here comes the Samaritan. What's interesting that Jesus uses the Samaritan, remember this is a story he's telling. So he chose, he chooses what he wants. To the Jews, the Samaritans were also unclean. They were not their neighbors, they were their enemies because they were not real Jews. And it was this Samaritan who's coming by, who goes over and tends to the man who was beaten by the robbers. Jesus said, out of compassion, he had compassion in his heart. He didn't care if this person my neighbor or not. It was who he was. He was a man of compassion. He wasn't afraid what's going to happen to me, is this true or not? He did not let his fears control his actions. 
He went overboard. He did not just care for the person. He took him to the inn. He told the innkeeper, spend whatever you want on him. If you need more money than I'm going to give you my way back, I will pay you more money. He was a generous person. He was a courageous person. He was a person of mercy and compassion. That's kind of the neighbor I want to have. But Jesus tells the scholar of the law, you go and be like that neighbor. It's not who is my neighbor, it's who am I? What kind of person am I? Am I a loving, caring, compassionate person? Am I a courageous person who trusts in God and let up my fears prevent me from doing what is right, what is loving? Am I a person who builds walls and separates myself from others? Because they're not worthy of being my neighbors. That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. What kind of neighbor am I? Not who is my neighbor. But unfortunately, most people today, they don't react in the way that Jesus taught us in this parable. I think most of the people today do what Garfield did in this comic strip. Are you familiar with Garfield? You guys know Garfield? The cat? You know, he's the typical stereotype, selfish cat, all it's about him. So in this comic strip, you have the first train, you have Garfield sitting in this armchair, and the owner of Garfield is a guy called John, and he's a goofy guy. And John has another pet, it's a dog, Odie. And Odie is the typical dog, the loving dog, the loving dog, you know, the one who really happy and joyful and play and playful. So you have Garfield sitting in this armchair looking at the window. And outside the window, it's all snows everywhere, and Odie's face is plastered to the window saying, you know, get me in, open the door for me. In the second frame, Garfield is thinking to himself, Oh, too bad for Odie. I can just sit and do nothing. I must do something. In the third frame, Garfield walks over to the window and closes the curtains. <laughs> That's what we do today in Moscow. That's how we respond to who's our neighbors. We don't want to see our neighbors. We have our own problems. We're so focused on ourselves that we don't reach out anymore, but we build walls to protect ourselves. We close curtains. And the more we do this, first it starts on the outside, and soon it goes inside to our families, we begin to close curtains between ourselves and our family members, our spouses, our children, our brothers and sisters. Because we so engross in ourselves, we like God, we all we talk about our own human comfort. It's all about me. That's what we are doing mostly in this world. That's what we're moving towards. Because we ask the question, who is my neighbor? Well, this guy's not worthy to be my neighbor. Maybe he's not Christian. This guy's not worthy to be my neighbor. He's undocumented. This guy's not worthy to be my neighbor because he's black or white or yellow. When we begin to ask that question, who is our neighbor, we begin to judge people. We put ourselves on the seat of judgment that we are better than them. In other words, we're saying, are they worthy to be my neighbors? Which means we begin to exclude others. And as we more exclude more and more people, we become a society that only focuses on ourselves. And if we keep that to the extreme with some people, it leads to the most violent actions that we witnessed to this week. Obviously, they did not consider those people whom they shot to be their neighbors. He said Jesus came to show us a different way, a new way. The way God treated us, we're not God's neighbors. And yet God came, He opened the door and came to us, became one like us, and told us, if you want to be a good neighbor, love people around you. Be a person of love. Love God as God loves you. Love your neighbor as God loves your neighbor. Don't exclude yourself. Don't go on and you know kind of build walls around you thinking you can protect yourself from the outside world. 
But the one to the world with the good news. Today, Jesus asks us the same question. What kind of neighbor are you? Not who is your neighbor. And Jesus tells us, go and do likewise.